Bull currently dominating Formula 1. It has been talked about in the F1 community in the last few days. Should Formula 1 change up the regulations to prevent Red Bull dominating this season and maybe next season and the season after? Now, in this video, I'm going to get into why, no, we should absolutely not change the regulations and why it would be pretty stupid, actually, to do so. Now, the first reason why is because it would ruin some of the positive things about the current regulations. Because even though, yes, Red Bull are very dominant right now, you know, if you exclude them, it is pretty close throughout the rest of the field. I mean, if we go to the results of qualifying in Saudi Arabia, if you take out the two Red Bulls, this is what the top 10 would have been in Jeddah. I mean, a second covering, you know, Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes, Alpine, McLaren, Haas. That is pretty close. We've seen in the last few years the gap between these certain teams be quite a bit bigger. And I don't think, even though Red Bull have got easily the best car, there is no doubt about that. I don't think that we've got, you know, a boring field. I think what we've got essentially for this season is a similar situation, similar field, to what we had back in 2020, where, of course, Mercedes, at the time, had easily the best car, but then after them, you had a close fight with Red Bull to a certain degree, Racing Point, McLaren, Renault, Ferrari, when they weren't, you know, absolutely terrible, Alpha Tauri occasionally would be up there as well, and I think this season is going to be similar to what we saw in 2020. And 2020 wasn't that bad of a season at all. You know, we didn't get, um, you know, loads of great races, but we got loads of great moments. And the battle behind, say, the two Mercedes and Max Verstappen was very, very exciting through 2020. And we had definitely a few very exciting races. So I don't think we're going to have just a very boring 2023 season i think if you look beyond the two red bulls i think things are going to be pretty close and pretty exciting and if we go to a certain couple teams such as aston martin who have improved obviously quite a bit with these regulations and the uh cost cap and also the atr that you know states that teams who are lower down in the championship have more uh, access to the wind tunnel they can have more wind tunnel runs than the teams higher up in the championship it do uh, does give those teams lower down in the championship more of a chance to close the gap and rise up and with aston martin yes of course dan follows finally designing his first full aston martin car and coming from red bull with obviously knowledge of the red bull concept for these certain regulations has helped but without Aston Martin having that extra access to the uh, wind tunnel compared to the front-running teams through last season, I don't think Aston Martin would be in as great of a position now if those regulations did not um, exist currently in Formula 1. And just to state the you know incredible gain from Aston Martin from the start of last season to this season, you can see it here. Uh, their gap to pole position in the first race in 2022 was 2.2 seconds. This season, it was just six tenths of a second. And again, a lot of that, yes, is because Dan Fallows has had a great effect on this team, applying the correct concept for these regulations with the side pod on that. But if the top teams were allowed to develop their cars as much as they wanted and throw, you know, five, six hundred million pounds uh you know developing their cars aston martin would not have closed the gap in the way that they have and now of course aston martin themselves are, are, you know they've got a lot of money but they wouldn't have been able to close this gap without the regulations currently in place helping the teams low down on the championship to rise up through the field and then the, you know the only team to uh to benefit from that you also have the Williams team, who started 2022 as pretty much the worst team on the grid. And 
because by mid-season last season they were last in the championship, were allowed you know quite a bit more time than other teams to continue developing their car. And as we have seen at the start of this season, that has really helped them put them into a position where they are solidly a midfield team and could quite easily finish, say, in seventh or eighth in the championship. And, you know, you can clearly see with this data here, Williams, compared to the start of 2022, have made quite a bit of progression. Uh, they were 2.1 seconds off pole in the first race of 2022, 1.7 seconds off they were at the start of 2023. So again, you can see a clear gain when, again, if we were back in the old era of Formula 1 where teams could spend as much as they had, Williams probably would not have gained on whoever was the front-running team from one year to the next. That probably would not have happened because, of course, we know about Williams's financial troubles. But because of these regulations, it makes it possible for Williams to uh, close that gap. Not, you know, absolutely massively, not as massive as obviously what Aston Martin have done, but it is a good thing for definitely those midfield teams to try and bring those teams up to the level of at least a Ferrari and Mercedes currently. And if, you know, Red Bull don't really get, um, you know, much, much better in the next couple of years, then the gap naturally should come down between Red Bull at the top and the teams below them. Not necessarily to the point where Red Bull, you know, will start losing championships, but the gap is going to continue getting closer and closer from the front of the field to the very back of the field. There is absolutely no doubt about that. But um, yeah, is for me, in terms of the way the regulations are at the minute, um, I, I don't think uh, they should be changed. I think, you know, the cars can still follow pretty easily. I know there were some complaints that the cars uh, definitely feel harder to, um, you know, harder to follow compared to last season uh, because obviously um, of the technical directive, I think, to a certain extent from last season. And also because more downforce is getting bolted on to these cars. But um, I still think the cars are pretty, you know, the, the ability to follow another car, which is, you know, the main reason these regulations are brought in to make it a lot easier to overtake. It still seems to be fine. And yeah, with the uh, sliding scale aero testing regulations, I guess you could call them. I think it's working absolutely fine. And with the cost cap, I think it's pretty much working out okay. It's just that Red Bull have really got these regulations correct. But there has also been this call, um, not just from, say, one person, but multiple people in the F1 community that, you know, there have been examples in the past where F1 has stopped a dominant team from dominating too much and for too long by changing the regulations when that isn't necessarily the case. Now, this is an example of what I'm talking about. And I'd say this is uh, this tweet from Aldas is revisionist to a certain extent because, yeah, in 94, 2005 and 2021, there were regulation changes and they did slow down those certain teams, but they weren't necessarily done to slow down those certain teams. And I think we need to clear up how, um, or with certain regulation changes in the past, how, you know, not all of them were to slow down or stop domination from continuing in Formula One. For example, all the way back in 1993, of course, Williams were dominating Formula One. Back then, you had, um, obviously, active suspension, traction control, launch control, so many driver aids. And Williams really were the masters of all of that stuff. And that's why they were so dominant. But the reason the FIA and Max Mosley decided for 1994 
to ban all of that stuff was because they believed that it was making the cars too easy to drive and they wanted the uh, drivers to have more of an element in the you know performance of the car itself rather than the cars just being um computers or you know being able to um not really have or need that much input from the driver itself and yes that did obviously hurt williams because they were using so much of this um innovative stuff obviously mclaren were using it quite a bit i think benetton may have been as well and maybe some other teams i can't remember exactly who and who uh who was and who wasn't back then in 1993 but i think we need to clear up that it wasn't purely to stop williams's domination it was to stop these cars back then becoming so easy to drive compared to how they used to be say in the late 1980s now if you go forward to 2004 because obviously the regulations did change for 2005 uh new aero regulations and obviously rules to do with tire usage as well i think you could definitely say with the new regulations stating back then uh, for 2005 that you had to use one set of tires for the entire grand prix i think you could definitely say that that was designed to hurt the Ferrari team, because as Ross Braun actually said, who obviously was uh, with Ferrari at the time, uh, he said, I think in 2005, that the Bridgestone tyres back then were designed ideally for 20 lap stints, and they weren't designed to be super durable. So, of course, it hurt Ferrari quite a bit in 2005, and that's why Ferrari, uh, the only race they won was obviously the infamous six car race at Indianapolis. But also, a big reason why the regulations for 2005 were changed is because the cars in 2004 became so unbelievably quick that they, the FIA, Max Mosley, who of course was the president, decided to try and slow these cars down, which they had done before, a few years before, back in 1998, as I'll get on to in a moment but with 2004 if you go look uh, back at that season so many lap records are being set the pace difference between the 2004 and 2003 cars was incredible and the 2004 formula one cars are still some of the fastest cars in the history of formula one and to slow the cars down and make them obviously more safe they decided to cut the downforce of those cars and it wasn't necessarily about absolutely stopping Ferrari um, you know, from dominating even more than they already were. I think, again, with the tyre regulation changes, yeah, they definitely were designed in a way to hurt Ferrari. But again, the, the cars in 2004 were so quick and, you know, the FIA had already set a precedence before of, you know, when the lap times got too quick they tried to slow the cars down like i said if you go back to you know 97 98 in 1997 the cars um got much faster than they were say a couple years before in 1995 and it was decided that for 1998 to you know for safety reasons and to slow these cars down they would change the technical regulations quite a bit they brought in groove tires um, and yeah they changed the um, aero of the cars quite a bit and yeah the uh, speed of the 1998 cars compared to the 97 cars was quite a bit slower and again it was done for safety reasons so i don't think we can necessarily say that with you know the 2005 regs that ferrari absolutely all of the technical regulation changes that year were to stop ferrari because even back in 97, which was an incredibly exciting F1 season, because of how quick the cars were getting, again, the FIA stepped in and made the cars safer. And, you know, we're not necessarily just trying to stop a team from dominating, you know, at that particular time. Uh, one um, era, though, that I want to get into is 2014. Because this is also mentioned as a 
regulation change that was you know designed to stop red bull which again is not necessarily you know mostly true i mean it is to a certain extent i think you could definitely argue but not absolutely 100 percent because in 2014 obviously we had the new v6 power units come in uh brand new technology a massive thing for formula one massive change to formula one and these v6 hybrids the reason they came into formula one was for road relevancy and obviously with um this technology you know being pushed by all the major car manufacturers this is what they wanted in formula one also i think formula one wanted to attract other manufacturers to the sport by making formula one more relevant to you know um or more road relevant than it was in the v8 uh era and remember renault who of course were uh powering the red bull cars in the v8 era were one of if not the main proponent you know pushing these uh regulations coming into force for 2014 of course they got it massively wrong um with the aero changes though i think you could absolutely say that they were changed in a way to stop red bull being so incredibly uh good with the aerodynamic side of their car i think you could absolutely make that argument but again these regulations were not necessarily put in place to stop red bull it was because formula one um you know wanted to update itself and become and it was a big push really from the manufacturers to become more road relevant and i think even if the you know aerodynamic side of the cars did not change i still think red bull and their dominance would have ended because obviously the renault power unit at the time was um you know was quite bad in 2014 2015 as well and never really became a a good power unit until say what 2019 2020 that type of uh era in the v6 era overall and if we go finally to the final example that people like to point to of you know the uh technical regulations being changed to stop a certain team the final example is 2021 now back in 2020 again uh similar say to 2004 the cars were getting incredibly quick and you know, they were pretty much at that lap record level. They were just incredibly quick cars. And for 2021, of course, the original plan before COVID hit was for, um, you know, these new type of cars we've got now, for those to debut in 2021. But of course, because of the COVID pandemic, those were delayed until 2022. And because also of you know these cars getting so much quicker and pirelli in 2020 didn't have really 2020 tires they had to use the 2019 tires in 2020 because their 2020 tires that they tested were inadequate they requested that the speed of the cars and the load they were generating be decreased in some way because it was just too much for the tires and we saw that, of course, in 2020, what we, we had quite a few races where there were tire issues and worries about the tires because of just how incredibly quick these cars were and the amount of load they were putting through the tires. I will make sure in the description of this video to put a link to an article uh, which does prove that the 2021 regulation changes were not about stopping Mercedes. It was actually about, um, you know, slowing the cars down and for safety reasons when it came to the tires to decrease the you know the incredible load the tires were being put through and i'm not sure necessarily it did work because of course at baku in 2021 we had a couple massive tire failures but those are legitimately the reasons why those regulations uh were changed for 2021 and i guess what i've been doing in the last few minutes is proving that a lot of these regulation changes that you may think um were to stop a certain team who were dominating from dominating even further that wasn't necessarily the case so please do remember that that 
regulation changes in the past were not necessarily to stop certain teams from continuing their domination and from you know um maybe extending um just how quick they were compared to the rest of the pack especially with 2021 um i think it's kind of a a bit of a lie that is told towards people that it was to hurt mercedes because again um pirelli they just couldn't cope with the incredible load being put through their tires because of how incredibly quick these cars were so i guess this is me correcting the record because if you go back to this tweet by uh aldas if i can find it i mean he states here as if it's you know known fact that these regulations in these certain years were changed absolutely to slow these certain teams when yeah with ferrari 2005 i think you could definitely make that argument but with 94 and 2021 i don't think you can really make a great case for that when when you look at what you know the regulations or the reasons they were actually changed it points to something quite different so yeah i'm just correcting the record on you know um why regulations have been changed in the past because certain people who are arguing for changing the regulations to slow red bull or stop their dominance are using these certain regulation changes from the past to justify it happening you know for this year um or next year when again um the truth isn't necessarily being told about these certain seasons and certain regulation changes but my final point with why i don't think um the regulations should be changed at all to stop red bull is because it's not necessarily going to actually work and there's actually one great example that shows that this might not actually work if they were to change the regulations to stop red bull because if we go back to Red Bull in 2011, of course, they were dominating Formula One. They had by miles the best car with, yeah, you know, their brilliant blown diffuser. And yeah, they were just incredibly uh, quick, much, much better than any team on the grid. Now, of course, their blown diffuser um, was taken away that they uh, were really the best at in that era. And in the next say year or so the regulations were changed in a way which i think were definitely designed to hurt red bull and to make things a bit closer between the field and of course for 2012 um, it did make things quite a bit closer you can see the differences in the front wings there obviously in 2012 we had the uh, a bit ugly uh, step noses and the blown diffuser stuff was banned of course for 2012 and for 2012 it did work red bull did not dominate that season they still of course won the championship but they didn't dominate the season but then you go to 2013 and they were back dominating formula one because fundamentally in that era between 2009 and 2013 obviously 2009 they didn't win the championship at all but in that era red bull they had the best car pretty much for that entire time and could not be stopped so even if you were to change the regulations and maybe try and um stop what their strength is in a way it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to stop the red bull team because fundamentally they may still have a good enough car to still win the championship you know next year and the year after and be still as dominant it is absolutely possible so i really don't think a regulation change necessarily um you know if you were to do it i don't think it would necessarily work and actually stop the red bull team clearly they've got the best car in formula one and in my view it's up to the other teams to get with the program and make a better car and more so copy what red bull are doing because clearly what red bull are doing with their design works the best with these regulations but guys let me know in the comment section down below should f1 change the regulations to stop red bull yes or no if you you know are yes let me know 
exactly why you know let me know your argument for why they should change the regulations if not then again let me know your argument as to why in my view absolutely not they should leave the regulations alone because as i said the field is closing up the regulations are working in that sense uh, the only issue i guess is that yes you do have one dominant team but for the rest of the field the field is closing up and even though you know certain people out there like to say that there is precedence of the fia uh stopping uh certain teams from dominating in the past that isn't necessarily true and like i said even if you were to change the regulations it doesn't uh necessarily mean it is actually going to work that's my argument let me know yours in the comments section down below guys and until my next video at the australian grand prix weekend of 2023 it has been me chazer hd goodbye